Welcome back to our course on Excel 2013. In this section we're going to finish off our review of the basics of formatting a worksheet. We're going to concentrate on borders in this section. But before we do, there's just one other little thing I want to cover on styles. In the previous section we applied a style to a couple of the headings and a couple of columns on this worksheet and we also applied some direct formatting to the cost and recharge columns. If you want to remove a cell style it's pretty straightforward. Let's take this particular one. We applied a cell style to the category cells here. If I go into the cell styles command in the styles group on the home tab if at any stage you want to remove the style from a cell all you have to do is select normal and when you select normal then the style selection you previously applied is removed and the cell style, the default cell style is normal pretty much the same as it is in a program like Word so every cell by default has a format of normal and you're applying other than normal styles to achieve the sort of effects that we've looked at so far the main formatting option I want to look at in this section is the use of borders and borders can provide a very good way of focusing attention onto the key points of a worksheet and also can help to segregate data and data types. If we take this particular expenses sheet that we've got here if I were to select all of the cells that actually have data in them so I'm going to start at A1 mouse down and drag down to F8 so I've got everything selected I can apply a border very simply if you look on the home tab in the font group there is here a bottom border button or what appears to be a bottom border button but if I click on the drop down I'll see that I actually have a whole range of border options now the reason that it says bottom border there on the button is that when you select one of the border options the one you select becomes the one on that button it gives you a one click access to one of these many options now let's look at some of the options if I've got a group of cells selected which at the moment I have and I were to just click for example bottom border let me do that and click away what you should be able to make out is that there is now a border but only at the bottom of the group of cells that I had selected. Let me select again. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all borders. Now watch what happens this time. Now again I'll click away and you'll now see that I have a full set of borders everywhere and this also emphasizes of course the merge cell in the first row. So that's basically how borders work and it shows you how straightforward it is to put borders on a selection. Now sometimes you may want something other than the default bordering that occurs with Excel 2013 and you can actually change a lot of aspects of the bordering. For example, let's suppose that I wanted to really emphasize the cost column here. If I select that column with its heading of cost and go back into the drop down next to the borders button note the borders button is now all borders because that's the last command I executed click on there and this type say thick box border click away you notice that the outer box border on those selected cells is now thicker than the others now with the use of the border tools you can build up some pretty sophisticated borders and there's one particularly good way of doing this that lets you see exactly what's going on and that is if you make a selection I'm going to select these cells and then on the border drop down this time I'm going to go for the bottom option more borders what I actually see is the format cells dialog the one we've seen a few times before but this time the border tab is selected and with the border tab I can pretty much draw the sort of border that I want now if you look at that carefully at the moment you'll see that I've got a thick border on the right yeah because that's the one that butts up to cost which has got a thicker border 
and the border everywhere else is the same. Now supposing I was going to make that vertical inner border there a dashed line, what I would do is if I choose one of the patterns, one of the styles of line over here, what about that dashed dot line, that one, and then click on this vertical line in the little picture, that becomes a dot dash line. If with the horizontal line I select that, that will also be a dot dash line. If I wanted to make the left hand line thick, choose a thick line, click on the left hand line there, and the buttons around the edge give me toggles. So if for instance I wanted to toggle on and off the bottom border, Bear in mind that I've still got this thick line selected. If I click once now, I get the thick line at the bottom. If I click it again, I have no line at the bottom at all. So you can see how I've drawn a much more sort of complex border pattern using this approach. Click on OK, click away, and you'll see the sort of border pattern that I've got now. I've got the dashed dotted lines horizontally and vertically inside thick on the left and right, the right one carried over from the cost here, and no borderline at all at the bottom. Now you should be able to see from that that with a little bit of judicious use of that dialogue you can achieve pretty much any pattern of borders that you want. Now before we move on I just just point out a couple of things in relation to touch. The use of touch for all of this is pretty much the same. You do all the same kinds of things. Because you may well be using the commands on the ribbon quite a bit more, you may want to use that option of spacing the ribbon out. So you go up to the button on the quick access toolbar that lets you switch between the two. Go for the touch option, space everything out. You can now get to buttons like the ones in the alignment group more easily. If you look at the category column, where the word travel is in row 7, it's become bottom aligned again somehow. I think my finger must have slipped at some stage. It's the sort of thing that can happen from time to time. Select that cell just by touching it to select it. You can see the selection box around it. And then for vertical alignment, you just tap the vertical alignment, the middle alignment bottom in the alignment group to restore that to middle alignment and then pretty much everything else you might want to do you can do with your fingers so if you wanted to change the border on that click the drop down and perhaps you could say thick box border and having the wider settings will really help you to use touch to achieve the same kinds of effects on a touch device the other thing to remember of course whenever you're working with this if you're going for a particular cell like that one for instance. If you touch it, bring up the mini toolbar, you can access things like font, fill, clear and so on. And then of course you have the drop down at the right with various other commands on it as well. So the touch equivalent of these pretty much follows the same pattern. So now here's something for you to do. This is example 2 from the worksheets that you got with the course. What I want you to do is on sheet 1 where we have these opening hours where you should already have changed some of the content so you should be looking at 24 hour clock for example what I'd like you to try to do is to format this a little bit better I don't want you to add any data at this stage we'll be doing that a little bit later on but I would like you to make the sheet theme compatible so it's theme sympathetic if you like so let's not have any direct formatting, do everything according to the styles available in each of the themes and also add a border or some borders in some way that brings out the structure of this data. Now that's example two and when you've had a go at it, if you want to see what I did with it, take a look at example three. That's it for this section, we have finished now with the basics of formatting a worksheet, I'll see you in the next section. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to the Simon Says It channel here on YouTube. Just click on the subscribe button right over there. If you're interested in taking your Office 2013 training to the next level, you can get over 70 hours of Microsoft Office 2013 training offered by Simon Says It. Just check out the About section below this video with more details. We'll see you next week with additional videos.